Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And wow, it is a beautiful day. Finally, the weather I've been waiting for because we want to mount this up on the tower very soon. It has been functioning very well. And uh, that's the two Heltex making up the relay station. And uh, yeah, my T-beam, however, which is up on the tower right now on the roof has not been functioning that well. Um, I believe the antenna I'm using has a lot of, uh, you know, it's not a very good match to the cellular antenna I'm using. And we're going to do a little experiment today to see if we can improve that first. Okay, so let's come inside here and I'm just going to show you guys what I've been up to here. And uh, just for a little update here. Um, Lots and lots of people have been showing up on here. It has been crazy. Look at this V-net. Especially yesterday during the eclipse. Um, look at this central Hamilton downtown node. Uh, Hamilton was right um, near totality. Uh, so there was a lot of people around there. And this guy's solar node. I don't know if that had anything to do with the eclipse. Um, just so many people are showing up. We got all these guys here in germ. <laughs> so yeah, this is a Kitchener Waterloo Amateur Radio Club. Uh, this is the Toronto Mesh. Many different nodes. Uh, just goes on and on and on. So many people have been showing up, but they are not hearing me when I try to talk back to them through my T-beam. And I believe it's my antenna I'm using, which is uh, a cellular antenna that I put the T, the T beam inside the antenna tube. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up there on the roof. We're gonna take the radome off, the tube off, and we're gonna remove the cellular antenna and we're just gonna use the T beam's own antenna. We're gonna mount it vertically inside the tube. And how I propose to do that is I'm going to use one of these, which is a female SMA. And I need a right angle uh, male SMA because of the, uh, the fit. Uh, there's not much room inside the tube to get into the side of the T-beam. So I have this guy. So I am going to have to do a splice probably right about there on this cable. And then we're going to install the antenna here. Now, here are some of the antennas, and it's like, how do you tell the difference between them all? Well, this one I marked, so I know it's from the T-beam. But if I, hold on a sec, if I screw this on here. We can look with the VNA meter, whereabouts it is resonating. And you can see the marker right there. And it is around 897. Yep. Let's go vertical with it. Yep, about 897. So it's around 900 megahertz that antenna. And uh, with Meshtastic in North America, the channel is actually, your frequency is 906 megahertz. So this antenna looks really good and resonant. And I'm going to bring down the antenna element that is in the tube up there, the cellular one, and we're going to do it on. I didn't have the VNA meter at that time, but obviously they're not hearing me because I talked back to these people and nobody responds. So that one is not as much resonant. It is around the same frequency, but a little bit less. This is the one that came with the Heltec. And... Let me see this one here. One of these is a 315 megahertz antenna. I think. Oh. Bear with me, guys. This is sometimes really hard to do with one hand. Okay, there we go. And yeah, you can see right away this thing is resonating at a much lower frequency. So yeah. Anyways, we're going to use the one that came with the T-beam. Okay, now I'm going to build this cable and I'll be right back. Okay guys, somebody has taken my chair. So um, yeah, I'm just doing a little test here. Uh, wanna make sure I did a good job splicing it. 
basically, yeah, you peel back the shield, you solder the center wire together, and then you put a bit of tape around it, and then you solder the shield together in a couple of places. Now, it is working, but there's something interesting. Oh, look at that. Okay, look at that. When I'm holding it. Why is that when I let go? Well, it's to do with the ground plane. It needs a ground plane, this antenna. When I'm holding it tight like that, I'm acting as a ground plane. So that shows me we need to put something metal underneath here to act as a ground plane. And I'm going to do that right now. And isn't this great to have a VNA meter because it's showing you how the antenna is actually performing. And uh, I would not have known that. Yeah, I would have just stuck it up there in the tube and it wouldn't have performed as well. So we're going to make a ground plane. Stand by, guys. Okay, guys, you can already see it's performing better all on its own. And look what I made. A ground plane with the large washer. And I soldered on four radials spread apart. And uh, you put about a 45 degree bend on them. And look at that, guys. It's working a lot better. And this is all on its own. I'm not touching it. It's all on its own. Doing that. Look at that. It's working really well. Okay, so we're going to go put this up on the T-beam now. Look at that. It's pretty cool. That's all you got to do, guys. Just get a washer and four radials. And uh, you also got to tune it a little bit with the radials. Um, I trimmed them a bit. It can drift in frequency if the radials don't match the antenna. So there you go, guys. Very simple ground plane antenna. Um, how to make these is online all over the place. So if you want to make your own. But it's basically, yeah, get a washer. This washer I found, uh, what is this washer? It's an F14 washer. And the SMA connector fit perfectly through it. Didn't have to drill it or anything. So, yeah, it took a little bit of heat to get the solder to solder to it, but um, that's all there was to it. And look at that. Look at that. That is look, doing really well on the VNA. Okay, we're going to go install this now. Okay, so I got it apart here, guys. There's the power supply. T-beam is just hanging out here. I just undid the, the antenna coax. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut it right here. This is the antenna that was in the top and uh, that's where our new antenna is going to go then we're going to put the tube back on it so there's the tube right there and yeah this is how I work with my ropes bring up I climb first then I pull up the bucket with the tools in it so here we go stand by okay guys I had to come down off the roof with it because when I was working on it up there I accidentally tugged on a little bit too hard and one of the power wires came off the voltage regulator so that's the thing when you work on stuff up high but it wasn't really mounted and uh just undid the clamp the wire wasn't tied down yet and brought it down with me but what's really cool is i've taken out the antenna which was glued to that one i snapped it off and we are now going to look at it on the vna okay hold on okay so this is actually a broadband cellular antenna i was using uh, at the time, I didn't have the VNA meter, so I just thought, let's try it. But here is its response. It is a broadband antenna, and it's quite interesting to see its response here. It is most resonant at, what is that, 600 megahertz. Okay, that is right. That is where LTE starts. 660, it likes that. And then everything else all the way up to 2000 is kind of mediocre. <laughs> Now, where we wanted to be at was 900. Oh, come on, this wheel is kind of sticking here. Um, you want to go lower. So that's why it wasn't really working very well. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch to SWR right now. Hold on a sec. Actually, I will show you guys how this is done. We go in here and we go to display and then the format. And then we just pick SWR. Oh, look at that. Cool. That 
Oops, let me just delete that. Go away. Okay. So that's our SWR up there. That point two one. And right around there. Yeah, that's that's not the greatest SWR. <laughs> We want to see something. Man, why is this wheel sticking on me here? Okay. See that one to one? That's what you want to see. So yeah, it's it's a shitty, uh, shitty, shitty, shitty. Yeah, at nine hundred. Uh, look at that. It's terrible. Terrible SWR. Oh my god. Okay. What well, could be worse? It could be that bad <laughs> anyways guys yeah this is probably going to make a big improvement with the new antenna stand by so while i got it down here i decided to update to the latest firmware since i got three radios we'll see how it works with the latest firmware so that's what it's doing right now it takes a few minutes then we're going to put it up there back on the roof stand by guys Okay guys, so there we go. It's all fixed up. It is running as you can see. It's on my computer and I can do a reset there. And uh, here we go. It's got 2.3.3 on it now. The latest firmware. And all I'm gonna do now is slide this tube on, put it back together. Then we'll go back up on the tower and stick it up there and it probably will work a lot better. I'm going to be really curious to see this, but I'm pretty sure it will. Okay, guys, stand by. Okay, guys, there it is. Mounted back up on the tower. It's not super high up. It's not way up there. Whoa, I can't even hold on a sec. I got to sit down on the roof when I do this. Way up there. <laughs> right now, we're just testing down here. And those are some uh, cellular antennas that I just took down off the tower. I just put them there for now. So there's the Mishtastic antenna. We're going to go back in and we're going to leave that running and see how many contacts I can get. And if I can communicate with them back, because I'm picking them up, they weren't hearing me. So we shall see. And there we go, guys. The Heltec Relay Tower. There's my two Mishtastic Heltecs running in there with their antennas. And pretty soon we'll be putting that up on the roof on the tower and that will be going up even higher than the current mesh plastic TB my antenna that I just installed up there so stick around guys more mesh plastic coming your way real soon